Um, so we're hearing across the board that you know the, the, the militarized strategy to the drug war is not working. Um, and um, the Global Commission on Drug Policies uh, had a meeting in Geneva in January and also came with very similar conclusion saying that eradication of production and criminalization of consumption uh, did not reduce drug trafficking and drug use. Um, so, I mean, clear once again that it's, it's not the right approach. Um, we also have a lot to learn from Colombia. Uh, I'm actually from Colombia originally, and uh, since 2000, the US has given uh, $7 billion to Colombia under the Plan Colombia, uh, the drug war strategy. Um, I've seen, you know, how militarization kind of becomes a, the norm, violence has, it has increased, and now Colombia has um, nearly 5 million people displaced uh, from their lands because of drug eradication programs, um, because of uh, land being transferred to, to big, big businesses, corporations. Um, and, uh, and more than anything, I mean, obviously a big part of Black Colombia was uh, drug eradication and fumigations, but we've seen that more people now are growing coca than when uh, the Black Colombia started. So, um, so looking, and, and I mean, Merida Initiative, also known as, as Plan Mexico, is, it's a model that also came from, from Black Colombia. Um, so it's, it's important to look and learn from, from that model. Um, so, I mean, the more I look at in, uh, into these and um, the more I realize and, you know, looking at many different reports of different organizations and what we're hearing from the ground in Mexico is that it's, it's not the right approach and uh, it makes me wonder always, you know, I, I always like to ask the question then, you know, like, if it's not working then why does the U.S. continues to push? Uh, this approach, um, and I always like to ask, you know, why, what's, what's the interest, what's the economic interest, how are we benefiting, who's profiting, you know, from, from these kind of uh, strategies, um, and I, I mean, uh, mainly I, I want to pose those questions, and I think it's important that we are posing those questions as we're, you know, getting more, more and more understanding of these so far, I mean, Mexico, uh, for example, we could ask, like, who's building the helicopters? Or um, we can see that no cash is really going to Mexico, but it, it's actually going to training and equipment. So the large portion of the, the money is, is going, it really remains in the U.S. Uh, it remains in U.S. companies, defense contractors, IT, uh, private security contractors. So there's, I mean, there's the economic interest and obviously um, with the North American Free Trade Agreement, there's so obviously that, that side of, of corporate interest and interest in control of resources and control of the region. Um, on the other side, um, the U.S. needs allies in Latin America and uh, Mexico is an important ally. So there's that political uh, side of things. But, uh, but yeah, I just, I, I mean, I think as we're exploring more of these, uh, I, I just ask and pose those questions uh, as much as I can. Um, and it's complex. I mean, it's clear that it's, it's very complex, but I do think that we see some openings in terms of, of looking for solutions, um, even in such a complex situation. Um, I think, I mean, the first step is obviously recognizing our own complicity in this, the complicity of the US, and recognizing that we are spending hundreds of millions of dollars in all the wrong things. Um, I mean, we can look, starting with root causes of violence and poverty, and realizing that U.S. trade design policy like the North American Free Trade Agreement has displaced more than two million farmers because they couldn't compete with the, um, corn subsidized from the U.S. And so how could we begin to then ask for a repeal for NAFTA or really renegotiate knowing that you know, it's, it's causing so much poverty and, and devastating livelihood in Mexico 
and leaving very little options for people, you know, to make a living. So either migrate or uh, join the informal economy, or then, you know, here's uh, narco trafficking or, or crime. So, um, so, so I mean, that's that could be one way. Um, obviously, we know that there's talk about passing uh, more free trade agreements with Colombia, Korea, uh, Panama. So, so knowing that NAFTA had such uh, a, a terrible impact in Mexico, a big part of our role is to make sure that no other FTAs, NAFTA-style FTAs, pass. Um, so that's one. I mean, one one option that we see. Um, another option is, for example, not one penny of the Medida initiative is dedicated toward drug preven prevention or rehabilitation programs in the U.S. Uh, so, um, so, you know, can we shift some of the money to go to that and really focus on the, the man side of things? Um, or, you know, legalization could be an option. Or, um, or having for there, there's no uh, parallel or complementary domestic le legislation to Merida that uh, is looking at reducing the demand uh, the demand of drugs in the U.S. Um, so I mean, again, options. Uh, we also know that 90 percent of the <coughs> weapons used in Mexico come from the U.S. So. Um, how could we look into that also um, as we're thinking of solutions? Uh, so there, I mean, I, I, I bring this up just to show that even within such a complex situation, there are options and there, there's windows of, of, of shifting where, where the money goes um, and shifting the framework of, of this militarized strategy. Um, and, um, and lastly, I just wanna, I mean, obviously there's need to, to really understand more and more uh, and become well versed and, you know, like keep reading and understanding this. Um, um, I wanna obviously offer uh, all of you um, some of the things that we do at Witness for Peace. We have delegations to Mexico and Colombia um, that are looking specifically at some of these issues. So if you want to go into a, a delegation, um, our schedule is on our website, witnessforpeace.org. Um, I also brought some more materials, a newsletter and fact sheets. Um, and um, I want to invite all of you also to the Latin American Solidarity Coalition Conference. Uh, it's happening April 8th to 11th here in DC at American University. And we're gonna, you know, keep exploring this issue of militarization domestically and in Latin America. So um, there's many opportunities to just keep keep learning and, and keep um, uh, kind of pushing ourselves in, in really understanding the, and ana uh, analyzing um, the war on drugs. Um, and then, I mean, obviously, I think it's really important to be engaged with our Congress members and be. Uh, talking to them and, and really voicing it very loudly that we oppose this militarized model, that we oppose uh, free trade agreement, um, and um, that we want, I mean, to the military to be to end uh, towards Mexico and Colombia. Uh, right now, it could be a really good time actually because uh, the budget request was. Um, released recently so it's it's a good time to do that and and also just i mean uh, in terms of public opinion interacting with media and um making sure that that media knows that what's what's our side of things and um and, and voicing that loudly so so yeah that's what i have and looking forward to some questions